Let me start by uh, taking you back to October the 7th, the day that was a catalyst for this new war. Where were you that day and when did you hear about what had happened? It was uh, 6.30 in the morning. I was planning uh, to wake up at around 7.30 because it was a holiday, a Saturday and a vacation. Actually, the entire week before was a national vacation because it was the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, I was planning to go to synagogue to celebrate the new opening of the Bible as we read each week a portion of the Bible. And so it was Genesis. And um, sirens broke. The silence in the entire neighborhood were torn to pieces by immense sirens and then booms and booms and booms. We immediately realized that we are under missile attack. It was a huge missile attack. In hindsight, we know that there was well over 2,000 missiles launched at all of Israel from Gaza. And the shock was huge, but we thought we ran to the shelters, but we didn't know whether there was anything else. We assumed, okay, missile attack for some reason. I was telling my wife, there's a missile attack. And um, then we opened the TV and started getting the news, endless news about atrocities all throughout our southern border, about people being locked in, in shelters and burned and, 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 and under attack. And they call, they call the emergency services. They call the uh, studios of television. They speak to the anchorman who's on, the, on TV and say, save us, help us, help us. We're, we're under attack. We're being butchered. We hear the enemy. We hear Arabic behind the door, etc., etc. And the whole hell broke loose. We've gone through the worst atrocity as a nation since the establishment of the State of Israel, the highest amount of Jews killed since the Holocaust, about eight or nine times 9-11 in terms of our national proportion of casualties. But it doesn't end. The cup is filled with poison. It doesn't end. We feel we meet families all the time. Uh, you know, I met the uh, 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 the uh, Almog Goldstein family. You have three generations, grandparents, parents, children, and many abducted and also killed and missing. And it goes on and on and on all the time. You wrote a piece in the New York Times about this and you talked about going to one of the kibbutz which were attacked and how you had to wash blood off your shoes and how the meetings you had with the families of those who've been taken hostage were the most difficult meetings of your life. Tell me about that. So I went to Beri Kibbutz. By the way, the Kibbutz Beri bears the name of the founder of the labor movement in Israel, Bel Katzanelson, that was his nickname. And Beri was, always looked to me as a, as a heaven. I uh, would go there because I was leader of labor. I loved coming to Beri. It's a huge kibbutz. The idea of kibbutz is the real epitomization of the successful of socialism in modern times, meaning everybody shares everything. You don't get an independent salary. You remember the kibbutz. You enjoy from the income of the collective. And they had an immense industry of printing press, and agriculture and things were looking so beautiful and we would come there they're, they're having dinners and lunches together in the in, in in the same dining room and it looked like an incredible society to me like a, a vision never come true of what equal life should mean in more, a, a, for human beings but in, in any case um, in Barry when I went in to see the havoc the atrocities, the burning homes. In one of the homes, when I walked in, there was a pool of blood still drying. There were scalps. There was a woman's scalp with a rake holding it. That shows how atrocious these people were, how villains they are, how crazy, animalistic and barbaric and sadistic they are. And you walk and the, the, the house is totally ruined, but you see a picture of grandparents and parents and children in, hanging on the security room where they had this their shelter. And the shelter was, of course, totally burnt. And I assume they're one of the burning bodies there. 
I mean, families were tied up in barbed wires and burned together. I could only think what they said to the Almighty before they parted earth. And then I, I went and I, since then I keep on meeting families of the hostages. Endless stories. Why would Kfir, a nine-month-old baby, be hijacked? Now he's already ten. His grandmother told us, sorry, he's ten months old. Okay? Why would Leah, three, three years old, be hijacked where all her family is being killed? They're, they just took her. And so forth and so on. Endless stories of atrocities on the one hand. And the worst of all is not knowing the fate of your loved one on the other hand. A clear crime against humanity, clear genocide took place in that area. Incidentally, the biggest peace-loving area in Israel, where the center of the peace movement was. One of our friends, Vivian Silver, she's from Vary, she was born in Canada. Vivian was the biggest leader of peace in Israel. She created a, an NGO called AJIC, A-J-I-C. Ajik is Arab Jews, Arabs and Jews together working for peace. Barry had a special fund, Pierce, a special fund where they would allot their money to help the people of Gaza. They had a fund that paid well for, for the people of Gaza. They had members who would drive to the border to take Gazans to, to, to be hospitalized and treated in Israeli medical centers. They would bring food to the, to the fence and give them food. And I'm asking them now, do you really feel that you know who you can trust anymore? There is Very similar things. But there is one unique thing, which is that the population of Gaza is pretty unique in that nearly half of the population are children. That is a unique situation. No, I'll tell you what's unique about the population of Gaza. It's the only population in the world where people routinely claim Israelis are committing genocide, but which has a population boom all of the time. I mean, th that strikes me as being quite an interesting thing about the Gaza. Um, but as for, as for the moral community, I want to make a very, very important point, if I can say so, on this, which is, you know, uh, people quite often abuse history, and they say things all the time. I mean, about the only thing anyone from history knows is about the Nazis. Here's something I can tell you with absolute certainty, uh, Piers, having not just seen some of the results of what Hamas did on the ground here in Israel a few weeks ago, but having watched the videos of the unedited footage, uh, which I was one of the journalists um, was sadly allowed to see the other day. I can tell you one thing. The comparison between Hamas and the Nazis is insufficient. And I... Sorry, there's an incoming... Uh, incoming. Get safe, Douglas. Are you okay, Douglas? from the other direction, so... OK, anyhow, we're OK. Are you OK? Um, let's, let's just... Yeah, 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 it's fine. Sorry, it was, it, was a, it was a rocket coming. It looked like it was just going to land on us here. Which, which way okay. was that rocket coming from? Okay. Was it coming from Gaza or from Israel? Yes, it seemed to be coming from Gaza, so... Yeah, it's fine. It's OK, it's been happening all day. Um, let me just I mean, finish just, this just, point, just, just Before we go on, um, Douglas, Atman, how does that make, sure. you, how does that make you feel? What just happened there? I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a little used to it. I was in Ukraine last year and was in Kherson and uh, uh, Odessa and uh, Mikhailayev and when the Russians were shelling it, so I'm a little used to it. Um, uh, but just, if I can just finish this point, you know, this, sorry, there's a lot of banging going on, but anyway, we'll keep going. Um, well, look, if you the, need to, if you need to stop, strikes, Douglas, we understand. The, no, no, don't worry. If we need to stop, I'll, I'll, I'll run to the shelter, I assure you. Um, the, the thing that strike, struck me, you know, Piers, about seeing the 7th of October footage was that um, uh, even the Nazis were actually ashamed of what they did. 
you know, SS battalions who spent their days shooting Jews in the back of the head and pushing them into, tr uh, into trenches had to get very, very drunk in the evening to uh, uh, forget what they had done. Uh, the Nazi high command famously had to sort of get around the problem of soldier morale because the soldiers knew this wasn't exactly what their lives were meant to look like either. I tell you one very big difference. If you look at the footage, the raw footage, and I really hope people don't on a wider scale have to view what I viewed the other day. Um, if they see it, they will see something that is at least as barbaric as what the Nazis did. But here's the difference. They did it with glee. They were deeply proud. You see people um, uh, trying to, you know, taking the head off a young Israeli man with a shovel and then uh, calling their parents back in Gaza and telling them, Father, Father, I've killed two Jews with my, t 10 Jews with my own hands. Get mother on the phone. I want to show, tell her how great a job her son has done. You know, I, I come back to this thing. I'm not exaggerating this. It's very, very interesting and people need to realize. You had this situation with, uh, with the Nazis where they also were a genocidal anti-Semitic organization, but they tried to cover their crimes up. Hamas are actually proud of them, mm. and they've said they will do them until the whole world is clear, clear of Jews. Yeah. So I suggest we take that seriously, and I think that Israel is taking it seriously. I hope they continue to take it seriously, but I think the world should take it seriously, and that includes Britain. And when I hear British journalists, British commentators, and British politicians lecturing the Israelis on what they should do, I think, I'm sorry, this shows a failing in our country. It shows that we in Britain cannot enforce our laws. We don't even enforce our borders in Britain. It's us that is the weak link in the international security chain on this. I have tried to turn this show into a genuinely fair platform for all sides, all arguments, all voices. And I think we've been getting the audiences that that reflects, which is people like it. They like to hear both sides. Why don't you? So, Pierce, thank you for bringing up that tweet. Um, first, I want to say that's not what I'm saying at all. There's pro-Palestinian, there's pro-Israel, but you've been having pro-Hamas people on your platform, and you're giving them an opportunity to spew their virulent anti-Semitism and their propaganda that justifies Hamas terrorism. It's one thing to can debate issues one, of geopolitics you, and national... Brooke, Brooke, can you name right one? In, right in front of me, I can't. I was replying to something that uh, well, just name you one. had some Went on that I was name replying. one guest I've had in a month. You know, I don't have who the names on me right now, but I can name someone no, but hang who is on, Brooke, on Brooke, right now. With all due respect, Brooke, Brooke, with all respect, you tweeted yeah. this lengthy yeah. attack on me and my journalistic okay, rigor. Okay, so, so I will talk about and it. I'm simply Let's asking you about, if you're going to do the people Brooke, you Brooke, have on right hang now. Hang on, Brooke. Hang on. If you're going to do that, I don't think it's unreasonable to say who. Which of my pro-Palestinian guests expressed support for Hamas? Because I must have missed that. Was Jahat Ali, who is on the show right now with us, for example, has deep connections to the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is the mother of all terrorist organizations. It spawned Hamas, a designated terrorist group, which is currently killing both Gazan and Israeli civilians. Was Jahat Ali, who is on the platform with me right now, and your audience needs to know this, sat on the board of the Muslim Student Association, which is widely known to be a Muslim Brotherhood entity. He also has writings that are cross-posted on the English language website of the Muslim Brotherhood. He has cross-posted authors who call for the eradication of the Jewish state. He's a leading writer at CAP, the Center for American Progress, which right. also has Let ties to, to the Muslim Brotherhood. Let me go he to has him. criticized cracking down on the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And of course, he just published an article saying that he's against Hamas because it's politically okay. So okay, him, so Brooke, but so Brooke, he is connected to the so Muslim Brooke, before, Brotherhood. Okay, That's who you have on so your before show I, right now. Before I go to him, you've just said he just he just written a piece condemning Hamas. So you kind of kill your own argument. Let me go uh, to Jahan. Well, he's sucking and blowing at the okay, same let me go time to the man you've just been. Let me go to a Jahan. That they are using right now. Let me go to the man you've been accusing. Jahan, what do you say to that? Well, first of all, excellent pronunciation of my name, Brooke. Thank you. Also, it's pretty amazing that for a human rights lawyer, you really don't seem to care much about 
human beings who happen to be Palestinians or Muslim or Arab. It's like a fireman who's actually of an arsonist, but thank I you. I risked my uh, life not, to make a movie I'm sure about it, Arab children. I risked my speak, life Brooke, to make a movie speak. about Arab I'm, children and was given an award Brooke, by the speak, United please. Nations for my advocacy work for right, Palestinian let him, children. Let him so answer, good job on doing your research. Let him answer you, please. You, you are the hero and you are the victim. Me. But let me say the following. Uh, let me say that, well, the person who accused me of being the Muslim Brotherhood and the person who's accused us, anyone who's pro-Palestinian, of being a Nazi, which is, by the way, what Brian Mass said, a Republican. He no, said there's no such thing that. as that Palestinian civilians because they're just like Nazis, right? But anyway, let me say this, because, Piers, I've seen your show. The I appreciate Brooke, can you let me speak, please? Do you please? condemn the Muslim Brotherhood? Let me say this. I'm going to go a step forward. Look at this. This is what I'm going to do, because I've seen people with my melanin on Pure Show I've proactively been asked to condemn. Hamas, I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hezbollah. I condemn Islamic Jihad. I condemn Muslim Brotherhood. I condemn chocolate hummus. I condemn, uh, I condemn anti-Semitism. I condemn Islamophobia. I condemn white supremacy. I also condemn Israel's occupation. I condemn settler violence against Palestinians that have killed over 100 people in the West Bank. I condemn Netanyahu using dehumanizing language that you use, such as calling every Palestinian Amalek. I condemn the heritage minister saying that he wants to drop a nuke, a nuke on Gaza. I have condemned all of that. Do you, Brooke, join me in condemning everything that I have condemned? Because I think as a human rights lawyer, anyone who cares about humanity, they should condemn everything that I have condemned. Brooke, 100%. do you condemn? So why, if you condemn the Muslim Brotherhood, are you publishing with the Center for American Progress, which is strong ties to the Muslim Brotherhood? And why do you allow your papers to be cross-posted on Muslim Brotherhood websites? Why have you denied Jewish indigenuity to Judea? Okay, why you know what, you Brooke, I'm going to get it. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in because we're straight. Jake, let me start with you. Many people are calling for a ceasefire. Uh, Queen Rania of Jordan, Angela Jolie, uh, Arab leaders, and so on. Uh, I presume you would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that they've murdered enough Palestinian civilians. Uh, and even Netanyahu, in an interview with ABC News, said, now that we're on the ground, we're finally pressuring Hamas on hostages. Oh, so the 7,000 bombs you dropped were totally useless and collective punishment and your attempt to murder civilians on purpose as some sort of sick vengeance. So please stop the murders, cease fire right now. Rabbi Shmuley, your response. Uh, Cenk is polling in the Democratic presidential primaries at zero percent, nothing. He has a greater That's likelihood of being elected the new king of France. And no, don't interrupt me, please. And the reason is that the American people are decent. They understand that Cenk's anti-Semitism, which he has voiced on your show repeatedly, calling Jews genocide dares. And this is the eve of Kristallnacht, the 85th anniversary of the start of the Holocaust. He would deny the Jewish people the only dignity left to us that we were victims of genocide. And he would say that we are the Nazis. We are the Gestapo for simply wanting to I defend didn't say ourselves any of that. Can you against stop the lying? brutality I didn't say and the any savagery of, of Hamas. Cenk, 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 Cenk. Cenk, you'll have your turn. Just show some decency. If you're not going to show it to my people, show it to me and show it to the viewers of the show. Stop but who is lying. surprised Everything that a man, is a who is surprised that a man whose, whose name, the name of whose podcast is Young Turks, who perpetrated the Armenian genocide? The Young Turks is like calling your podcast the Young Nazis, the Young Gestapo. They killed one and a half to two million Armenians between 1915 and 1918. The Armenian community has begged Cenk to change the name of his show. For the first half of his life, he was a complete Are Armenian genocide denier. Are now, you going to now, discuss now, the issue? Now, 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 now he is a Holocaust denier because he is saying that the Nonsense. Jews are engaged Total in a genocide lie. of the can Palestinians. Now, which nation, wh how right. can there be no, no. 1.8 million Shmuley, you made, you, Arab citizens? Rabbi in, Shrumi, okay. I'm going to go to, I'm gonna go to Cenk. You said, you said some very strong things about Cenk. You can now respond, Cenk. Yeah, this, you should never have this guy on air. Everything he said is a lie. I don't deny the Holocaust. That's insanity. And in terms of the Armenian genocide, uh, there is a powerful analogy there. Why was it a genocide? And yes, it was a genocide. Why? Because they moved and displaced so many people and killed civilians on the way. What is Israel doing? Moving and displacing millions of people and killing innocent civilians. It is the exact definition of a genocide. So I don't... 
I, I think the Jewish people are an amazing people and their, their culture is beautiful and I don't tolerate any anti-Semitism. But I think that the occupation is decaying the moral core of Israel. How long are you going to oppress these people? But Jing, and I know this guy, all he wants to do is an ad hominem attack. He's a liar. He's, and, and you could tell exactly what kind of indecent human being he is. But the main reason he's doing it is to avoid the topic. When are you going to stop murdering Palestinians and cheerleading it? Okay. If you're talking about Jeng. genocide, you're the one may, right may now I, doing the respond? genocide. May I, may I respond? May I respond? <laughs> Yes. Well, go, ahead, more lies. go ahead. You know, I've spent I've spent my life debating people. Whenever someone whenever someone starts using personal names and screaming like a lunatic, they're losing the debate. Let me remain. You're factual. the one First who of all, made the up things. And, the, Palestinians, the, Palestinians, the, Palestinians, the Palestinians, the Palestinians, the Palestinians were offered a state in 1936 in the Peel Commission. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 1947, the UN Partition Plan. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 1967 after Israel conquered Judea and Samaria and the West Bank. They rejected it. They were offered a state in 2000, Yasser Arafat, Ehud Barak. They rejected it. They were offered a state with Ehud Omer 2008. They rejected it. They have the Israel, you know, laterally withdrew from Gaza in 2005, and they did not create a state. In fact, where were you, Cenk, when you say that you care about Palestinian children, when Hamas stole the highest rate of per capita international foreign aid, larger than the Marshall Plan, from Palestinian children, did not build schools for them, did not build hospitals, took all the money to buy bombs and to build a network of tunnels, which is larger than the, than the New York subway system. Where were you then? Why are, did you only come up now? In fact, when Bashar al-Assad killed 600,000 children, Arab children, when he gassed them with mustard gas, my organization took out full page New York Times, ads to protect them from sarin gas. Where were you then? You don't care about Arab children. You are a Jew hater, defined as someone who only Shut wants to lie up. and say that the Jews you are bigot. genocidaires. You and racist. don't try to cancel me and say that I shouldn't be on. You're not a producer of this show. Because you are ignorant of the facts and ignorant of the history does not mean that you can cancel uh, my voice.